Do you believe Atlantis existed? For over 2,000 years, most scholars said no, it was just a myth. But now, cutting-edge technology like satellite archaeology, geochemical surveys and underwater drones is revealing something a lot of us believe, that we can actually find the ruins of Atlantis and possibly change human history forever. Welcome to What If We're Wrong, where we go beyond the headlines to explore history's most exciting and mysterious legends. Today, we're looking at the high-tech research and discoveries around Atlantis that might just change the story forever. So let's get into it. The story of Atlantis begins with the ancient Greek philosopher Plato. Around 360 BCE, he wrote of a powerful island civilization that existed some 9,000 years before his time. It was located beyond the Pillars of Hercules, what we now call the Strait of Gibraltar. According to Plato, Atlantis was a marvel. It was a society of great engineers and architects. They built a kingdom with a perfectly level, rectangular central plain, surrounded by concentric rings of water and land, connected by bridges and canals, and dominated by a central hill where a grand palace and temple to Poseidon stood. Eventually, the Atlanteans grew arrogant, waged war on their neighbours, and in a single day and night of disaster, they were swallowed by the sea. For centuries, most scholars believe Plato had invented the story as an allegory, a philosophical warning about the dangers of pride and imperial ambition. But not everyone agreed. Some of Plato's earliest followers, like the philosopher Crantor, believed Atlantis was real. He even claimed that Egyptian priests had showed him inscriptions backing up the story. Others, like Aristotle, dismissed the idea as fiction. Still, the idea never fully went away. During the Renaissance, Atlantis made a comeback. Jesuit scholar Athanasius Kircher even drew one of the first detailed maps of the Lost Continent, placing it right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. In the 1800s, a writer named Ignatius Donnelly took things even further, much further. He claimed that Egypt, Mesopotamia, and even the Americas were all descendants of Atlantis. His book was a bestseller, and suddenly Atlantis wasn't just a myth. It was the origin story of every ancient civilization, wrapped up in spiritualism, pseudoscience, and a growing obsession with forgotten knowledge. And while many of these theories haven't aged well, the core idea that there might be a real event or real place behind Plato's story still drives the search today. So where is Atlantis? Today, with some of the most advanced scientific tools, we're uncovering clues and getting closer than ever to finding the truth behind the legend. If Plato's clues are taking literally, Atlantis once lay just beyond the Pillars of Hercules. That would place it in the Atlantic, near southern Spain. And it's here, beneath the salt marshes of the Danana National Park, that some researchers believe the lost city may be hiding. This region was once a thriving coastal zone before being struck by massive floods. Ancient settlements have been discovered nearby, and several Spanish and international teams have conducted extensive archaeological and geological surveys since the early 2000s. A team led by archaeologist Sebastian Celestino and geophysicist Richard Freund applied a mix of ground-penetrating radar, magnetrometry, and electromagnetic induction to scan beneath the marshes. These tools revealed buried geometric patterns, including rectilinear and circular structures. Seismic imaging has also helped reconstruct the prehistoric topography of the area. It suggests that the current marshes were once a large inland bay connected to the Atlantic, a plausible match for Plato's description of a circular island surrounded by water. It's also important to note that the area is close to ancient Tartessos, a lost civilization described by the Greeks as wealthy, powerful, and enigmatic, adding cultural weight to the Atlantis hypothesis. In 2018, a UK company called Merlin Burroughs claimed they had located Atlantis in this very region. Based in North Yorkshire, Merlin Burroughs specialises in identifying lost archaeological sites using satellite imagery and historical records. Their team analysed data from commercial satellites such as Landsat 5 and Landsat 8 
and highlighted large circular and rectangular features visible near Danana. They suggested these structures matched Plato's descriptions, including the concentric rings and elevated platforms, and pointed to concrete samples they claimed were 10,000 to 12,000 years old. However, these findings have yet to undergo peer review. Critics note that some of the satellite detected features would disappear in earlier imagery, raising the possibility of natural formations or artifacts of image processing. Others argue that a 10,000 year old city would predate known urban civilization by several millennia, placing it well before the earliest known cities in Mesopotamia. Still, the Danana wetlands remain one of the most actively studied Atlantis candidates. While the evidence is far from conclusive, advances in remote sensing and archaeological science are steadily transforming this ancient landscape into one of the most data-rich and intriguing locations in the ongoing search for Atlantis. Before we continue, if you're liking this content and interested in future videos just like this one, don't forget to subscribe now to the channel. Just over 3,000 years ago, an advanced civilization known as the Minoans dominated the Aegean Sea. They built sprawling cities, engineered complex plumbing systems, and left behind magnificent art, and then almost overnight vanished. Could this civilization, centered on the volcanic island of Thera, modern day Santorini, be the real Atlantis? The Minoan eruption was one of the largest volcanic events in recorded history. Using underwater ROVs and sonar mapping, scientists have reconstructed the scale of the blast, which may have triggered massive tsunamis that destroyed coastal cities across the eastern Mediterranean. Tephra analysis, the study of volcanic ash layers, has helped to precisely date the event, revealing that it may have occurred around 1600 BCE. This puts it surprisingly close to the timeline Plato may have distorted or inherited as oral history. At the buried city of Akrotiri, archaeologists are using photogammetry and lidar scanning to reconstruct Minoan architecture in digital 3D, showing just how advanced this civilization really was. The Minoans had writing, seafaring trade, and what looks like complex urban planning. Their sudden disappearance, possibly due to the eruption and resulting social collapse, fits neatly with the Atlantis narrative of a powerful civilization wiped out in a cataclysm. But there's obviously a problem here. Santorini isn't in the Atlantic. It lies far east of the Pillars of Hercules. Supporters of the theory argue that Plato, writing centuries later, may have confused or conflated stories from different times and places. If that's the case, then Atlantis wasn't lost at all. It was simply misnamed. But others say the search should take us even further west, into the open Atlantic, where an island might have once stood before vanishing into the sea. The Azores, a group of Portuguese islands nearly 1,600 kilometres west of Europe, sit on top of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, one of the most geologically active fault zones in the world. Autonomous underwater vehicles are scanning the ocean floor at unprecedented resolution, mapping undersea plateaus and collapsed ridges. Bathymetric sonar reveals ancient landmasses that once may have been above sea level, including plateaus with possible man-made anomalies. Geological surveys using seismic reflection data have also found signs of massive underwater landslides which could correspond to ancient catastrophes capable of wiping out large land masses. Some independent researchers have claimed to find rectilinear structures on the seafloor near the Azores, but peer-reviewed confirmation has been elusive. The main challenge here is depth. Much of the Atlantic Ridge lies thousands of metres below the surface, and even with the best technology, exploration is expensive and limited but not all possible locations are lost to the deep. While the Azores offer one possible candidate for Atlantis beneath the mid-Atlantic waves, a much newer discovery in a completely different part of the ocean has started making headlines of its own. In 2024, a 
Spanish-led team from the Geological and Mining Institute of Spain launched a project known simply as Atlantis. But this time, the focus wasn't myth, it's geology. Using one of the world's most advanced research vessels, the Sarmiento de Gamboa, the team deployed a deep-sea robot named Luso, equipped with a high-resolution 5K camera, sampling arms and sonar mapping tools. Their mission was to explore the ocean floor north of Lanzarote in the Canary Islands. What they found was amazing. Not one, but three massive submerged volcanoes forming a seamount they've since named Los Atlantid. These underwater giants sit over 2,300 metres beneath the surface, yet they bear clear traces of having once stood above the waves. The ROV footage revealed lava flows, steep cliffs, coastal dune patterns, and most mysteriously, what appears to be an ancient beach terrace. Further analysis revealed that these volcanic islands date back to the Eocene epoch, some 56 to 34 million years ago. Back then, sea levels were lower, and these formations may have formed a cluster of small islands. But over time, as the lava cooled and the crust became denser, the islands began to sink, slowly, gradually, until they disappeared beneath the Atlantic, leaving behind only traces on the seafloor. Lead geologist Louis Somoza noted that while this site is far too ancient for human civilization, its striking features, grand scale and dramatic submersion, and location beyond the Pillars of Hercules could very well be the geological seed of the Atlantis legend. Whether it's sunken islands off the Canaries, lost empires or archaeological mysteries, each new discovery is a piece to a puzzle thousands of years old. Yet the full picture still eludes us. And if Atlantis ever did exist, this may be the first time in history we've had the tools to truly find it. So what do you believe? One of these sites is the most compelling, or are there other parts of the world that could contain clues about Atlantis? Let me know in the comments below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you're curious about another underwater mystery that might just be rewriting history, in a future episode I'm going to be looking into the Yonaguni Monument off the coast of Japan. So don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.